Hey folks, Fino Black, basically here we're at Sechi and they got great footage and this is pretty much historical here because basically what you've got is that is a photon belt coming off of Pluto and going towards the sun. I'm well, going to come back to this in a second because I'm going to show you some very interesting stuff also that we've got hanging out around by stereo. And the most interesting thing we have here, this isn't Mercury, ladies and gentlemen, and basically I'll just slide down to the actual map and you'll see that when you're shooting from A, Mercury is out of the view because otherwise you'd have a full facial shot of the sun, okay? Because when you're shooting from Ace over here getting this shot that I just showed you up there, and you can't get Mercury because Mercury's over on the other side of the sun. Now you'll be able to see, I'll even be able to show you in a few seconds, that when we're shooting from A, you're not going to get Mercury, and that's not Mercury there, okay? This is the Earth here. And this isn't Mercury over here. That's not Mercury. Okay, factual. Uh, I should be able to go ahead and give you this is another shot from B side. Okay, then this is Venus. Okay, then I can pull down and show you the map again. And basically, B, you're shooting, you get Venus. And remember that this is not the sun off to the right and everything like that. The sun is over here to the left. Okay, this is the sun here. And that's Venus, and this is stereo B H1 giving you that shot. Okay, so factually, I can go ahead and give you this here shot. We'll show you Mercury coming in on B. And that's the only way you can see Mercury right now, because you really can't see it from the stereo A. And I've got another shot. I'll have to pause here for a second, and it'll actually because it'll be the 30th, okay, instead of the, instead of the 29th, and you'll be able to see where Mercury is in the shot from B from stereo behind. Which again, real fast, I can go over here and go to the map, and this is a stereo behind picture there. From B, and as you can see, when B is shooting, it'll get you can get Venus, and then that's the Sun. That's right here, and factually, I'll put because when I go over to stereo, which basically is showing you the same shots, but you get how they place them to try to help people out when how they can you know their NASA is a little bit trying to from stereo uh, beacon trying to show people how to read these pictures, which I've been trying to show people for a long time. See, this is the sun in here. They can't shoot the sun. It's too damn bright. It's basically bright like these super giants. And basically, I'm going to show you some footage of this here action, too. So, as you see that the sun is here, okay? So, and I wasn't really pointing that good when I showed you the, the shot, but that is Venus right there, okay? I was showing you from scientific form. Okay, and this is Earth here. And we'll take a look at what this is here. We'll end up finding, because you can see the magnetic line on there, no problem there. Matter of fact, I can go ahead and we'll pump that up to like 400% real fast, and then we'll take you off to space. Well, we are in space here, basically looking at these photos, you know. So you can see the magnetic line on this here. Now we'll also be able to see some CME action from something below Earth on another shot that I've got set up too. So let's go ahead and save some video time and get over to. But just make sure that you realize that the sun is here. The sun is in here, okay? And you're gonna see how huge the sun is and how huge Pluto is in a, in a few minutes too. So this is the sun here, lower left, and that is Venus from stereo B behind, as you can see there. And then when you're looking at stereo ahead, we wanna know what the hell this is because when I go back and we go ahead and refresh you here, at looking at ahead, and we go down to the map, that's where we like scientific front line because I show you the map. And you're shooting from A because that's A's shot up here. I know it's repetitive, but I'm hammering it home to you that basically when you're looking from ahead, you can't see Mercury there. Now, if they were to put the satellite in a higher orbit or something and try to shoot it over top and down and beyond, i.e. the mirrors, which they probably have, but right now, only thing that you're getting from off of A, the only thing you can see, the sun's in the way. You don't get it. The sun, basically, the sun's over here. You see, that's the sun over here. You can kind of see the glare of the sun this halo effect there of the light that hits Earth and see how perfectly we get the sun to shine on Earth. If something was ever freaky to happen to the sun, we might not get these perfectly directional sunlight photo, photons, protons, and electrons from that radioactive sun that's out there, okay, which is our sun, okay. Now when we go to B, See, you can see Venus, and I'm just, I know I'm being repetitive and going over this repetitive, but hang on because you want to go see that, that Pluto footage that I've got. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Okay, so when we're over at B, you can see 
And remember the sun is to the left. Okay, that's the sun over here. Okay. And then that's Venus there that you're being able to see from that shot from stereo behind. And it is behind. You can barely see the H-I-N-D. These are super giants. Suns that are four to 78 times the size. And we're not the only ones that like space for them here. The Air Force is always watching the sun. We want to thank every branch of the U.S. military. Okay, and that's for Holloman Air Force Base. And yeah, it's the military, as you can see, blah, blah, blah. Not very fancy digs for checking out and keeping all those satellites and eyeballing and watching the sun and seeing the shots, what's going on with the sun. Basically, this guy ends up letting all the branches of the military, at least the Air Force, for doggone sure, because of radio communications, because of the sun's possible interruptions from solar flares, CMEs, uh, protons and photons, okay, coronal mass ejections and CMEs. So that's the digs at the Air Force Base, so they like watching the sun, and you do too. Okay, now what we're going to do is this is your Rigo Cantaris and the sun, your uh, basically data, factual, temperatures, mass, everything like that. And remember, it's not a location map, it's just the idea that, but it does give you even though a, a the uh, Hertzberg Russell diagram is not a map, when they are showing the size, they're showing you the size and temperature and everything like that. But they also do show you somewhat in space, location-wise, of where they are in the supergiant's main sequence. See on this, and I've had people be smart asses before and say that the idea that it's not showing it does because they're showing you somewhat of the feature of how it's formatted because they burst like, they basically are that, and you're going to see from the Sechi footage in a minute. Now, there you're basically your comparison of Rigo Cantaris A and B, and then factually, I take you and give you this. This is actual the apparent size of Pluto and the stars, and you're going to see that this is actual factual. So you're going to, if anybody's been saying thinking in their mind in the past, well, Bino's not telling us the truth. This is all to scale, and then I gave you Alpha Centauri size with the Sun. See, Alpha Centauri B is a little bit smaller. Now, remember, whenever I ever talk about Alpha Centauri BB, that's the planet Alpha Centauri BB, not Alpha Centauri B. Alpha Centauri B is the closest star planetary orbit. This is our, that's basically that planetary orbital, orbital, is basically an orbital, which is Alpha Centauri BB, which is a planet, okay? That's the closest star with a planet. Alpha Centauri BB, and that's the size of it pretty much, because this is all to scale here. Charon, Bataglius, Cyrus is just the brightest star in our sky, okay? It's the brightest, it's not the biggest. If you see how daggone small it is. A lot of people on a quiz question would say, Cyrus is the biggest, it's just the brightest, okay? Pluto is basically what they, basically a dying star, but it's a planetoid object because it's died out enough. The only reason that they might not be calling Pluto a planet anymore because the idea that it might still actually be pretty close to a, it's a burning out star, dying star, and it's got a lot of moons around it and stuff like that that they've been studying. But that is the actual size of Pluto, and actually we're going to take you to fresh footage from a Sechi that's going to actually factually blow your socks off that I was showing you earlier, and this is going to actually show you how big Pluto is. This is the porn that I'm talking about. Pluto kisses the sun. You see how huge that that, I'm going to keep out here from a long distance and explain this. As you see that I've got it going forward, because I, I can reverse this. I'll hit reverse in a little bit to show you that it's not, you're not seeing kind, some kind of, uh, you know, an anomaly. And how they've always said, well, it's, it's a flare off the camera. No, it's not. And that's what NASA's been pissed off at Beano ever since I proved the fact that these are all uh, CME reactive flares, which is basically a coronal mass ejection, is basically what this coronal mass ejection is. That you get a little bit of it off the sun here, of that coronal mass ejection there. Okay, that's Pluto. How huge Pluto is, as you can see, basically, it's pretty actual factual with me showing you the actual fact data that Pluto is bigger than the sun. Okay, and they never really tell you that. Okay, and that's what they've been pulling this where they because they've been wrong about Pluto for about so much stuff over the years. There's your actual size of Rigel Cantaris A. Okay, and once again, Alpha Centauri A is Rigel Cantaris A. Okay, Rigel Cantaris A is Alpha Centauri A. It's the same dog. Okay, they always throw you off with the names and the sizes. Okay, so actually. You see, with the freshest 
Sechi footage, you see exactly how large Pluto actually is. And it's basically Pluto's a dying star. Okay? Because this is actual to size scale. Millar arc seconds. Now that's basically astrophysics. Okay? Sizing things up. Okay? And then factual, this footage from Sechi backs it up a thousand percent because that there is a photon ring a basically coronal mass ejection reactive flare coming out off of Pluto or something bigger behind Pluto but it sure should be Pluto and that's why basically Sechi's sitting there telling you hey that's Pluto there and then see how big that ring comes in and it comes to the Sun and then the reactive flare comes off and remember this is your footage and your date and time there and then I'll take you, and there's your CME that comes off the sun. Okay? But first you get the CME reactive flare of Pluto, and then you get the CME of the sun that comes off. So don't, and because you, you can see nothing's coming off the sun. It's coming towards the sun. This ring comes towards the sun. Okay? That ring, right there, that photon ring, that photon ring comes toward the sun from Pluto, and then kiss, boom. So there's your Pluto porn kissing the sun, okay? And then the CME reactive flare off the sun. And I can sit here and you can watch it again and again because it's 24 hours of, there's the photon ring coming from Pluto. It'll come off of Pluto. Boom. And then I'll give you a, a distance of what Pluto is to, to the sun right now too. And then I'll just pop down here real fast too on the size on this. Boom. There's 200. And there's your date and time. And there's what I've only been showing you what's going on right there. So, pretty wild action. And this is all your sechi footage there. H1B. So, let me give you the distance from Pluto to the sun. And that is Pluto's coronal mass ejection reactive flare to a CME coronal mass ejection off of the sun. So Pluto and the sun kissed. So and then this other magnetical line that you're seeing over here when you're watching too, that's Earth right there. Okay. There's Earth right there. Okay. Earth. And then there's Mercury up there. And that's what I'm saying. See, this is from B side, so you don't get to see, you can't see Mercury from A. So when I started out the video showing you what the object of magnetically you can see, you can understand that you can't see Mercury, so what is that other planetoid object up there? Now remember, our next big object that we get is this one here, FM10, and then we get this 1.9 kilometer object. So we got bigger objects coming up, and we'll have my next video will be able to show you more of what I've been talking about. Now, I'm going to show you make make real fast. So that's Hama. Uh, basically, it could be Hama that you're seeing in the shot that I started showing you in the beginning of the video. Because basically, I'll show you make make is too far over. Remember, the sun's in the center of the well. It's not really the yellow dots here. It's the center of the well down there. I just can't really zoom in that good. So basically, I go ahead. This is our next close object coming around, but it's very small. And then this shows you factually what how everything's sitting in space right now. And then I just screwed that up a little bit. I don't understand why that's doing that, but. So, well, basically, we're getting short on video time here, but this is how everything sits out there in space. So, out there, the distance on Pluto to the sun, which is huge, I'll give you that distance here in a minute, and then the sun's right there, the red dot right in the middle, okay, and then I can zoom back in, and you'll see where Earth is sitting, and so forth, and so on, and like I say, basically, as you see Mercury go back there, you couldn't have got that, that couldn't have been Saturn or anything like that. You can see Saturn from B, but not from A, so... Uh, Factual will give you a distance from Pluto to the Sun and right there on that map you can see and then we zoom in and that I'll give you that distance from there all the way to the Sun from Pluto. And currently there's the Sun and there's Earth underneath there and basically this is our next closest object that's coming by is 2000 not FE. So factually the distance that we've got for Pluto is basically 3 billion miles and I can give you the distance here and remember that coronal mass ejection flare, reactive flare that came off Pluto, sometimes it's as far away as four billion, four and a half billion miles, that's how far sometimes Pluto is away from uh, the Sun, okay, and that's the distance right now, it's three billion miles that that photon ring 
came off of Pluto.